Hi everybody, welcome to episode 40 of the Teesside Business Podcast. Uh, today we're looking to be joined by Darren Sutherland um, and Ian, who both for, come from Utility Alliance. Thank, Thank you very much for having us. Yeah, thanks very much yeah. for coming in, Dan. Uh, obviously Utility Alliance is a great success story in the local area. We're primarily a channel um, that's focused on the business community, so most people listening will kind of like know who you are, but it's great to kind of like get a bit of feedback. So. Uh, could you tell us, start off just by telling us a little bit about yourself, how Utility Alliance like, came into being, as it were? Yeah, sure. Um, we've been going for about four and a half years now. Um, we first started in, I think it was February of 2015. Uh, subsequently to that, my business partner and myself worked with a competitor to ourselves now, which was up the road in, in the northeast. Um, I spent 16 years previous to that out working out in the Middle East. Mm. Um, I worked as basically a project manager with the new energy services, um, things that would be installed out there like EV, um, solar, um, ground source heat pumps, CHP, anything like that. And Bob come from a, a selling background. Mm -hmm. um, so we got our heads together and we said that we think we could do a, a really good place in the market, good good thing in the market, and uh, we started up that business. Mm -hmm. um, we put a business plan together, which mm -hmm. was we spent about nine months putting together before we actually w went and actually carried it out. Very important to get your business plan in mm -hmm. place, gives you a good cuff compass reference point. And we started off um, with about four, four, between four and six guys. Mm -hmm. uh, two of those was apprentices. Yeah. Um, we like to keep the apprentice thing flowing through the company, yep. even to today. Um, and, and it was just like success from day one, really. We knew, I think we had a focus and a passion, you know, where we actually wanted to go. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think for any anyone that's actually starting a business out, you, you've got to have those those two qualities. You're yeah. actually starting. You've got to believe in what you you're trying to do, um, and also have a passion for what you actually want to do. Mm -hmm. You know, I I had a I had a different scenario to Bob. There's about 14, 15 years difference between our ages. Yeah. So Bob's got a young family. Um, I'm like 50 plus years of age when we when we when we started. So for me, it was you know if this doesn't succeed then it's getting to the job center and, yeah. and getting a job job there. And obviously the jobs become a little more limited when you get a little bit older. Mm -hmm. With Bob, he had a young family. Um, he, he he had to really produce for those guys. Yeah, yeah. So we had to make it work. So <laughs> Do you think that was, uh, like obviously you guys have like grown in skill. Like yeah. for a lot of people, it's their dream. That's what, you know, they mm -hmm. would love to do, be able to replicate that kind of success. Do you think it was that kind of, hunger for it that it had to work that was your main differentiator or what kind of like separated you for your competition that allowed you to grow so I think when we was when we were with our, our, our previous company um, we, we took all the good attributes that they had to offer mm -hmm. and then we wanted to add our bits to it yeah yeah um, and I, I think that really gives a focus and a drive to actually move forward mm -hmm. you know and, and obviously to actually entice people to actually come and work for us yeah as well which we, which was a big thing you know um, so after we after we, we, we got the Hartlepool uh, set up, which probably took about eighteen months to get to get together, we, we decided we'd expand down to Sheffield, mm -hmm. uh, and then subsequently we're now in Newcastle as well. Yeah, you know, so it, it's grown in a, a phenomenal way. You know, sometimes I have to pinch myself. Yeah, you know, to the amount. I mean, we've got five hundred and twenty staff now going across the, the, the three regions. That must put you one of one of the biggest employers in the local yeah. area, I would imagine. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I'd like to have the five hundred and twenty staff. Completely out of Teesside. Yeah. Yeah, because we're in Sheffield when we're in Newcastle. Yeah. Um, but it fills me with pride that, that we can we can offer journey path, especially mm -hmm. for the young people. Yeah. As well. And also we across them five hundred and twenty people we've got thirty five apprentices. Yeah. Which I'm a big advocate of. Yeah, um, uh, that's something we talked like a little bit about yeah, before we start. Absolutely. It's something that yeah. I really want to focus mm -hmm. on right over here. Because like recruitment and staff is obviously um, something that a lot of people who listen to and like yeah. deal with on an everyday basis. Yeah. And, you know, there's a big difference between people who might have, you know, like ourselves that have got a few members of staff rather than 500 members yeah. of staff. And a big part of that, I imagine, again, is recruitment and then keeping those people yeah. that allows yeah, you yeah, to yeah. grow. Uh, do you think that obviously getting people in from an apprentice standpoint, so they're not, I don't, don't say green, but you yeah. know what I mean, mm -hmm. um, that you can put the, the values of your company Absolutely. into somebody in there and yeah. allow them to stay? Mm -hmm. one, one of the yeah. things we we've noticed from apprentices is when they come to us they obviously haven't got experience of work or life in some instances but that's good because they haven't got bad habits 
Mm-hmm. So we can train them in the utility alliance way, if you like. Yeah. So they'll come in, they'll learn the job, um, they've got experienced people around them, um, and they're progressing. There is a genuine career progression path there. There is, yeah. Some, some of our best performing sales staff now, or support staff managers, have joined the company two or three years ago as an apprentice. So it's not just a case of getting an apprentice in for 12 months and then bin them off and bring them next back in to, to get their money. There is a genuine career path there for them. Yeah. And as I say, some of our best performers have, have really followed that that path right through. It's so something we encourage, isn't it? We do. I think from from a Teesside point of view, and even a little bit further north than Teesside, we've, we've had some really bad news over the last, say, 20, mm-hmm. 30 years yeah. with the advent of the, the coal industry. Mm-hmm. Um, that's gone now. We've seen the same happen with the with the uh, the steam industry, and yes. subsequently the the the, uh, the shipbuilding as well. So, however, on on, on the plus point is we're very good at diversifying and recreating ourselves. Yeah, and we're very uh, a hard metal inside mm. the tea side people, and you know, which is a good attribute to have for yeah. success basically to make things happen. Um, so even with just not even employing the apprentices, but the other stuff that we actually take on, we find that some of them haven't got the background they've actually come from, but they actually want to give it a pump and give it a go. Yeah. And we actually give them the induction, the training and the support to actually get to where they actually want to do, mm-hmm. you know, like, and, what, and what, to, what to actually get to. Like, yeah. Yeah. The directors are very proud of, I'm sure Darren won't mind me saying this, proud of the fact that our HQ is in Hartlepool. Mm-hmm. We've mm-hmm. had various offers to move out of town, yeah. Yeah. but Two of the three directors are, are born and bred and educated in Hartlepool and we're fully aware that while Hartlepool has a lot of positives, there's also a lot of negatives, mm-hmm. social and economic issues. Yep. Always top of the league when it comes to unemployment or teenage pregnancies or you know, all the negative stuff. Yep. Um, and really we've we're proud of the fact that the impact we've had on the community because we've we've created jobs, there's, there's genuine opportunities for people to have a job. And some of our staff are coming from families where there's two generations of people who haven't had a job. Yeah. And they grasp the opportunity with both hands and they're, mm-hmm. they're excelling. And they're, you know, they're, some of them are, if this sounds corny, but some of them are like the breadwinners for their families. Yeah. And it's it's refreshing to see. And it's, it's something, it's not just a case of ticking boxes and saying, oh, we've employed 10 new people this month. Yeah. We're really proud of the fact that we're bringing people in, giving them an opportunity, not just for a job, but for progression mm-hmm. and, and to start off in a career. Now, that career might not be with us five or six years down the line, but if it is, fantastic. If it isn't, then we've given them the grounding to learn about work and life, responsibilities, and move on to hopefully bigger and better things. Yeah, I, th- I think that's a, a really good point. It's already uh, mentioned, like recently, when we were going through a round of uh, recruitment, that no one stays with the company forever. No. Even if they stay for their entire life, they're still yeah. going to retire at some point. Absolutely. You know what I mean? yeah. mm-hmm. So I think a lot of people see when people move on to the next thing, see it as like a betrayal that they leave in the company and stuff like that sometimes, where if you are taking people on and nurturing them and moving to them the next steps, then surely it's a compliment for your organisation that you've provided such great training. I think so. Yeah, I, I, I think that it gives them um, a worth mm-hmm. of, of actually being in the society you know, uh, and a meaning worth. They can, like a lot of the guys use the money, what they earn from ourselves to get married, they can buy a house, they can, you know, get that car, get them holidays, you know, uh, and see parts of life possibly that they wouldn't have done, yeah. you know, with, without that, you know, but um, it, it's, it's good. It's a good thing, really, really good thing. Not only for myself, but for my other two business partners, Bob and, and Phil Moore. Yeah. You know, so they're, they're very, you know, up for this as well type thing. We know that the task isn't finished. We know there's a lot more out there. Um, but when you look around, there's, we're only, what, four and a half years old. There's a lot more companies out there that are the same size that can be doing exactly the same. Yeah. You know, if we can do it, you know, a lot more companies can step up to the mark. You yeah. know, if, if every company of, say, 20 people, 30 people took one apprentice on, you know, it would change the, the look of, you know, the way that our society looks at the moment. Yeah, uh, I think it's an unfortunate thing with people don't view apprenticeships in the same way as you guys, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? You're, like you obviously have highlighted there that you're looking for somebody to come in that you can help grow and nurture that yeah. allows your business to scale over that period of time. We've spoken to a few people in 
the, the views of the apprenticeship that they're going to like say on a scale of one to ten yeah staffability mm -hmm. they're looking to get apprentices that are coming in at sevens eights and nines and yeah. it's like well that's not ever no. going to be the case that's never going to be the case yeah of yeah. course you're not going to yeah. have good experience yeah. there and neither are they yeah it's um i like to look at it when you when you bring your apprentices in it's like having a blank page mm -hmm. you know you're creating that person you know the way their outlook is going to be on life their experiences what they're actually going to hold mm -hmm. You know, uh, and uh, like you said, if they move on, or you can look at them and say, well, uh, I put them in a really good place, you know, to actually move on from. Yeah. Because it's a career and an experience development they're actually going through as well. They're young people. Some, yeah. of, them, some of the guys in my place are only 16 years of age. Yeah. So basically, some of them have left school and then on a Monday morning, they've started work. Mm -hmm. You know, so that's a big testament to them. Really I think apprenticeships are coming back in a fashion as well. Mm -hmm. You know, there was a, a peak in the 80s where you know, you could go and get a trade, leave school at 16, go and get a trade mm -hmm. as an apprentice. Yeah. But I think with rising costs of universities and things like that, particularly in Hartlepool, and I don't mean to harp on again about the economic problems, but not many kids in Hartlepool will go to university where the parents will be saddled with a 20 or 30 grand debt. Exactly. So Hartlepool is a bit of a hotbed for apprenticeships. I know Hartlepool College and FA just down the road from us. They're the second best provider in the UK of apprenticeships. You know, they work with some some big names. So there is a there is a talent pool there in Hartlepool. Um and I'm I'm not getting away from the fact we have bases in Sheffield and Newcastle as well, but Hartlepool as a headquarters there there is a, a very good a very talented group of young people there who are available for work. So it would be foolish of foolish of us not to tap into that. Yeah. I'd like to mention as well that it's not just us. We, yeah. work, we work very closely with Hartlepool Borough Council. Mm -hmm. um, we've worked with some of the senior figures. Um, most most recently with Ben Houchin, mm -hmm. who's the Teesside Mayor. He's, yeah, we've uh, had Ben on previously. Absolutely. Uh, he's a class act. He is. Absolutely. He is. Yeah, yeah. You know, that this is a guy that, that's um, not saying it, but making it happen. Mm -hmm. You know, um, and, and I've got nothing but great words to say for that guy. He's, he's made it happen with the airport. He's doing a lot with the steel. The steel problem at the moment, yeah. you know, and uh, he, he's really like stepped up to the mark, made a big difference to the area, you know, for everyone. He has, yeah. Uh, obviously, like he came on the podcast and stuff like that after uh, we had a couple of chats, and we're not a politics podcast, but yeah. we're a business, yeah. But yeah. I was very happy to have him on because it's not, a, it was never about politics within, mm -hmm. like, he never yeah. discussed politics, it was all about the betterment of the local area and the business and how we go to do it. I think it's something that we're seeing more and more in the local area. Like you said before, uh, I don't know if this statistic is still correct, but a few months ago it was that we had the highest number of startups out of anywhere in the country. Yeah. And I think that is down to like, our want to roll up our sleeves and just make it happen. Yeah. I think it's good. I think what we need to do is possibly in the future, um, like myself and, and my two business partners would like to get into the mentoring mm -hmm. uh, role of things, um, because it, out of all the startups, you know, I'd say probably four out of every ten may may end up, you know, yeah, not, not making it. Well, you know, I, I think it's statistically quite a bit higher, isn't it? It's yeah. possibly a bit higher, yeah. you know? and, and I like to change that around. And, yeah. and I'm sure there's a lot of um, mentors out there, similar to myself, that, that would like to maybe give a bit of time up, you know, yeah. half a day a week to actually go into the colleges, going to the schools, you know, with startups. I mean, at the moment we, we're setting forth a, a program on R&D on yeah. uh, on energy savings uh, things. And uh, that's where your ideas come, you yeah. know, especially in some of the young people who've got some tremendous ideas, mm -hmm. you know, really, really good ideas, but they just need the backing and the mentoring, you know, how to get from A to B, you know, and how to get through that business minefield, yeah. <laughs> because it is a minefield when you, when you first, when you first set out. It, 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 ge geographically, we don't shout enough about what we do. Oh, we're terrible. Is it? It's know, why we yeah, started. Exactly. Exactly. You know, we're terrible. Yeah. Uh, uh, we were talking about it yesterday. We're, Companies don't shout about themselves no. in the local area. They see it as something that they don't do. Yeah. But they are very passionate about what they do yeah, when you start talking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we're terrible about, like, yeah. you know, and us as a company, we're guilty of, like, not shouting about ourselves. When you go to yeah. expos or networking events and stuff like that, and, you know, Bill Scott of Wilton's a great mm -hmm. example of mm -hmm. someone who's up there with the best in the, in the country, best in yeah. the world. Um, like so, yeah, as well. yeah, we've got so much talent in all mm -hmm. different sectors. But, as the team's value, I've always said we don't we don't shout enough about what we do. And Maybe we think, consider ourselves as the glass half. Yeah, empty. But, um, I see things changing of, slowly. Yeah, now. I can. Yeah, like I think that, like I say, there's some individuals, you know, um, 
who have been phenomenally successful in business, you know, mm. yourselves and Bill, and I would yeah. love to have you on, Bill, if you ever listen. <laughs> um, uh, I've tried to get Al- Alistair on. Uh, yeah. I'll through the table, you can tell me down for that. Um, <laughs> doesn't do it. Uh, uh, I'll try and get them into it, I'll slow it during. Anyway, uh, I think we've got such a good thing of, like, you're talking about mentoring and things yeah. like that. Like, I've, I know I've touched on it a bit previously, and it's a bit of a, a bugbear for me, that you see so many people who are, like, business coaches or mentors and then you ask them kind of thing so what business did you build yeah. like have you got a big business or did you have an exit from mm-hmm. a business that I'm like oh no I've never done it and I was like how can you coach somebody in business when yeah. you have never yeah. built and grew a business that's mm-hmm. just bonkers to me like I can play a Microsoft flight simulator but nobody's letting me fly a plane <laughs> you know like so but to have somebody like yourself who's prepared to give back that's like a phenomenal opportunity for so many people it is yeah I, I think it's um I mean, my career is coming to an end. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, uh, I'm in the late fifties now, and I see myself probably. I'd like to think I could go to my seventies. Mm-hmm. You know, but um, I'd love to. You know, the opportunity to help. You know, some of the young people with with, with free of charge as well. Yeah. With with uh, like you know to try and get to that next level, mm-hmm. try and get things off the ground. Like you know, so I think it's very important, important for the country. Because those inventors and then R&D people out there could be the next Bill Gates yeah, yeah. of the world. You know, we've got the ideas, you know, to actually take forward. It is, know. yeah, yeah. Um, it's how, like say, is a mind feel like people don't know where to mm. start? Like if you've got an idea or a concept, it is. Like there's the whole, not only that, but the business side of it. Yeah. Of running a business mm-hmm. is, is one thing, but scaling the business, like yeah. there's another entity yeah. like that's an animal of itself. Yeah. Like when you started to scale in Europe, I would personally call it aggressively scale it, you know, in the time yeah. that you've done it, you know. Um, what kind of challenges did you meet? Like, if you could go back in time, would you change anything or would you do things a bit different? Like, That's a great question. That's yeah. a really, really good question. Um, when we first set off, um, our office cost us £400 to set up. Yeah. Yeah. Um, most of the things were bought off of eBay. Mm. I bought a printer for about a penny. Mm. Um, it was a bit of a dinosaur, but it, it got us it got us through for the first six months. Um, we bought old desktops, the, the furniture was, was old. But I think at that time, our mo- first and foremost thing was to basically talk to suppliers, the suppliers that we actually have, our, our top suppliers, get commercials in place, and make sure we're on a, a good footing, you know, before we even start bringing customers up or businesses up or whoever we're going But make sure all the, all the key cornerstones are actually in place. You know, so you've got a firm foundation. I think that's the that's the key. You know, and make sure you're working with reliable people. That's 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 key as well. Um, it, it's you know, it, it you sometimes you don't know until you you go for a learning curve. You know, everyone goes for a learning curve of things, but sometimes that learning curve plateaus a bit. You know, you, you've got to be there to you know take the brunt of, of of the bad times as well as the good times. But then again, if you didn't have the bad times, you wouldn't know how good the good times were. You know, so that's the. It's always, a, it's always a, a funny situation because it, the sector we're in, the sales sector, everything's a bit back to front in it with a startup because in any other business you would have your man at the top, your directors, your boardroom, whatever, and you'd have your head of HR, your head of training, recruitment, PR, and then you'd bring your staff in at a lower level. Mm-hmm. This is sort of backside first because without the sales staff, the people on the phone and the people knocking on doors, there's not a need for your head of HR, your head of training, your head of recruitment, etc. Yeah. So, in terms of a business model, it's a little bit like I say, backside first, isn't it? It is. Yeah. We've had to get the foundations in first, and then as the businesses grow, it's like, oh God, we need a, we need someone to back to pay off, we need someone to do training. The head of HR used to, with a handful of staff, she would look after payroll. When the photocopy ran out of paper, she'd go to Asda yeah. and buy a really yeah. paper. Now all of a sudden you've got four hundred and fifty staff, so. You have your finance department, which has a payroll team within that department. When the photocopy runs out of paper, we now run our supplier, we bring a, a pallet full of stationery. Yeah. And it, it's all happened within quite a short space, short space of time, hasn't it? It was a very, but, when we first saw it, was, it was, um, I don't know what you call it, multi-skilling? Yeah. You, 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 you have to fill the gaps of, of what your needs are. So you, you start to learn very quickly what works and what doesn't work, yeah. you know, and who your friends are and, and who won't give you the, the, yeah, the yeah. time. Um, so it, I think it's like Ian says, it's to go from that to go where we are, the, the four and a half year period's been, it's, it's quite a turnaround, you know, yeah. really. You know, it's, yeah. it's keeping up to date as well. I mean, we're, we used to spend quite a, a lot of time and money on outsourcing work to say, 
off the top of my head legally. Mm -hmm. So we'd have a, a solicitor that would work for us. We've got to the point where we thought, right, we've got that big, let's bring in an in-house legal team. Mm -hmm. So we've done that. You know, we've had to add to the training. Um, the recruitment team, as we're creating more jobs, we need more people to get bums on seats. Yeah. So we're creating not just sales jobs, but senior senior management jobs now. Mm -hmm. And as the company develops, and you know, we, we always keep abreast of what's going on within the energy sector, um, other senior positions will be created. Right? Absolutely. I mean, the big thing for us at the moment is uh, the electric vehicle mm -hmm. charging. Um, although the infrastructure is it's, it's catching up at the moment, we're playing catch up. Yeah. The last 18 months, Anthem, especially um, from the government, it has been a big focus on this. And it's got to happen. It really has. I mean, with the carbon, you know, you can see what's happening in the world with the climate change and everything. We, yeah. we need to really get on top of this quickly. Um, so I, I think that we're going to have to accelerate it. Mm -hmm. I think there's going to be more, more companies coming to the marketplace. Obviously, one of those is going to be ours. Yeah. Um, I see the turnaround is probably 6% of our business, possibly in the next five years, it's going to be more about EV and, and, and the electric, uh, electric vehicles and, and charging points. Uh, so I think also with the energy services as well, you know, so we're developing, we've developed our own platforms, our monitoring platforms, which enables people to actually see what their actual usage is, especially in businesses, yeah. um, because you can't change if you don't know what you're yeah, yeah, really yeah. At, 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 at the same time. So there's going to be, there's been a lot of R&D actually spent on that. Which is, which is, which is it's like you talk about the, the progression and the growth of the utility alliance as a business and Darren mentioned the business plan that business plan wouldn't have had any reference in four years ago to electric vehicles no no no, no whatsoever. so you've constantly got to keep an eye on the news mm -hmm. and keep an eye on, on what's happening within the sector to try and stay one step ahead of your competition yeah because if volvo or range rover or whoever are talking about producing 80 percent of their cars are going to be electric within the next five years yeah. that's great but if my car runs out of yeah, electricity yeah. in stock, and where's the nearest where's the point? Someone needs to provide those power points yeah. uh, to charge the cars up. So we've teamed up with a, one of the UK leaders with a partnership there, which is progressing nicely. Five years down the line, we could be sitting here talking about 80 or 90% of our business could be focused on electric vehicle charging. Mm -hmm. And what, what's made us a success now might be only a small portion of the business. So it's, it's constantly, as I, as I say, Constantly following the sector and, and staying up to date with things. I think that's one thing we pride our company on is, is we're very nimble. Yeah. If someone, we have work on an open door policy, the director's floor works on an open door policy. So if someone has an idea and it's a decent idea, we give them the time, we, we hear it out, and, and if it's good enough, we'll probably implement it within 30 minutes. Mm. Uh, so we're not so much of a dinosaur. There's a lot of dinosaurs out there that, in, in all business, mm. yeah, that, that by the time you, you've got that moment, and by the time there's been a board meeting, a board meeting, a board meeting, the moment's gone, yeah. really. So I think it, it pays to be nimble, it pays to be quick, it pays to listen to your staff, because somebody, we don't know everything. <laughs> some, of, some of the guys on the front line hearing it all the time, the guys that are that on, on the calls, on the, out, the outbound team, you know, they're hearing it, you know, from the horse's mouth, so I think, so we, we have to take them all, what they're actually saying. It's very like David Brent, but, you know, if you stand still, you go backwards, don't you? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so that's why you know we've got three directors who, as Darren said, it's an open door policy. We haven't got a, we're not a PLC, where if someone wants a new pen, yeah. they have to report to the board in London, and then the next board meeting in three weeks, you yeah. know, you get the yes, you can get your pen. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's it's a lot more reactive. I think sometimes if it's not, you could could miss the board. Yeah. Um, I would like a thousand percent agree with you, and it is like a testament to yourself that you can be that like innovating yeah. and flexible at the size that you are. Mm -hmm. You know, like. I know a lot of companies talk about when the you know like ourselves that are a lot, a lot smaller, but we do have the you know the uh, the leisure to be the like passive, yeah, yeah, so we can change. pivot like quite yeah. quickly. But it's a, di a lot different pivoting with ten people yeah. than it is five hundred people. Yeah. You know what I mean? So that moment's really uh, important as well. Mm -hmm. You know, it really is because that that you could either latch onto something that's going to go crazy mm -hmm. right up there, or you could latch onto something if you take your time and you procrastinate. And leave it that ends it like where everyone's scrambling around yeah. after the, the the crumbs really you yeah. know so i think that i think it's very very important also i think it's good for the the youth within the actual business not only the apprentices but the youth who can actually see that we make decisions like that and we've made serious decisions that they offer up yeah. as well so it's a company that's even though there's three owners yeah we take on board yeah. what everyone what everyone says and what, what everyone wants to do 
you know, we listen to everyone, basically. Not all those decisions are right as well. I think it's important to point out. Yeah. We're, while we're seen as a success story, which is it's great and it's a pat on the back for everyone who works for the company, we're still only four years old, four and a half years old, and we're still learning. Yeah. And we will learn mistakes, and we've probably done things recently, or, or not so recently, that given the chance we'll do differently if we were present with that opportunity again. But sometimes you have to make mistakes to, to learn and to, to grow. Yeah, yeah. Kind of but like falling, failing yeah. forward or falling forward. You know, Darren, I'm sure Darren won't mind me saying we won't sit here or Darren and the bosses wouldn't sit here and sort of say where the finish article because no, by no means no, we are. I never say There's, that. Even it's if, still a long way to go. You know, I, I think we, if you're patting yourself on the back too much, you know, you, yeah. you're not doing enough. Yeah. Really, there's always more to do. There's there's always more to to, to, to go out, whether it be recruitment, training, and especially training. You know, because I'm a great advocate of, of having the best training in, in the process because it's, it's basically an investment in your staffing. You know, knowledge is power, as they say. Yeah, yeah. You know, um, it, it, you've got to be on top of everything. So there's always changes, especially in our industry, because the landscape can change within a matter of months. Oh yeah. You know, it, 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 it's 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 an industry that's um, that it's. It's wanting the energy services at the moment, but unfortunately, some of the some of the businesses don't want to take it on board yeah. because they can't see the long term effects of that. Yeah, yeah. You know, so hopefully, well, what we're trying to do with the R and D and the, the actual energy platforms that we should provide, they can actually see that. You know, so it's a bit of a, a look into the future. Yeah, of, yeah. Of what what where we're actually going and what we're going to be it's, doing. It's not just about telling people to turn your lights off when you leave the no, office now. Yeah, no, it's a bit more, more, more complex than that. And, you know, a lot of businesses, a lot of our clients, with all respect, haven't got the understanding of it because they specialise in a different area. Mm -hmm. So we're introducing things like battery storage or voltage optimization, and it's a you know, Darren mentioned carbon earlier. Everyone's a little bit more green minded mm -hmm. now. Yeah, got that more responsibility. Mm -hmm. There's and a lot of companies, especially of your size, that kind of that you do have a responsibility to take well, yeah. care of it for the environment, and like obviously. Yeah. You guys have already touched on there, the responsibility you've got for your staff looking after the local area, but yeah. the environment itself, yeah. like moving forward, like the innovation that you think as I just even start to think about it, like how the entire industry must be changing. Like, uh, yeah. was it last year the water was deregulated? Yeah, before. It was, yeah. It was, yeah. It was. I don't know if I'm yeah. correct. Yeah, yeah. That's, yeah. that's yeah. the regulation. Yeah, we, we touch on that. We touch on that. There was a fork in the path, <laughs> which, actually, which actually came up with. We, we could have either gone to the water side, mm -hmm. yeah, and, and put it all of those, or we could have gone to the, the EV side. Yeah. Um, strategically at that time, we went to the EV side, mm -hmm. although we didn't ignore the water, we, we do do a little bit of water, but we don't do as much as what we do on, on the EV side, mm -hmm. because we thought, well, EV's getting a lot of backing and a lot of, you know, mm -hmm. airplay at the moment, you know, from the government and from the people and, and the, the car companies are actually, you know, really, really getting on board with it now. So we thought there's more traction mm -hmm. on that side of the moment. However, I do see that there will be a time and a, and a place for the water side. You know, I, I anticipate probably in the next 10, 15, 15 years, it's going to be the liquid gold. Yeah. You know, of, of what we're actually we're looking at. And the, mm -hmm. the water is it's, it's getting less and less water yeah. supply. Mm -hmm. You know, the kind of the, the world's getting hotter and hotter. Yeah, yeah. So that's going to be, that, that's going to be very, it's going to be a very, very expensive commodity. Yeah. <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll go back in time and start invoicing everyone for these. Uh, yeah. Bottles of water that we give away. Um, a little bit of advertising there for your water. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Maybe I should set up a water company now. <laughs> well, Just tough it out for yeah. 10 years and then um, we'll do it that way. But it's definitely something that we see that, like, uh, or my perception, sorry, of a lot of companies, especially in Teesside, is we've grown to a certain size on what they were doing, but yeah. they're still clinging to that. Yeah. Like, they're not taking the next step to innovate, mm -hmm. you know, for the next generation, like, even stuff like you know, using like a lot of print advertising and stuff like that, or yeah. all forms of advertising that doesn't yeah. speak to their markets coming in, you know, yeah. the 30, 35 year olds that are making the decision, they're not going to the shops to get papers anymore and stuff like that. And yeah. Yeah, I think it's a bit like going back to obviously your sector, I imagine there's a lot of people who are still clinging to yeah. electricity and gas and you know, all that newfangled yeah. electricity, you know, well, yeah. we don't do that, we do this, this is it. And I think it's got it's a about time educating mind. people as well. And well, you know, we're we don't describe ourselves as a call centre, but it, it is 80% of the business is outbound calls. But what we're finding is we're becoming like a one-stop shop. Mm -hmm. So we, we get an, an energy contract and then we also offer advice on reducing carbon footprint and you know being a bit more cleaner and how to store mm -hmm. energy and things like that. So it's not just about doing a sale and then 
bringing them back in three years when the contract's up for renewal. But yeah. The customer will have an account manager who, as things change within the sector, will be in regular contact with that customer, saying, if you, give, if you, you know, this would be ideal for you, or you've got this in your contract, it's probably not worth it now, but we can introduce this. And it, it's becoming, a, it's building up a bit of a, not a friendship, that's too corny, but like a rapport with your customer. Mm -hmm. And each account manager will know each customer's needs. Yeah. And, you know, we try to guide them down the, down the right path. I'd like to consider, yeah, I'd like to consider, that's a good, good point. I'd like to consider ourselves as a specialist mm -hmm. in the marketplace. I, I'm not interested in, in selling insurance. I'm not interested mm -hmm. in selling mortgages yeah. or, or data for telephones. And yeah. I mean, uh, that's like a jack of all trades. Mm -hmm. You know, I'd rather just specialise exactly what we specialise in, which we're really, really good at, and, and we know there's a big market out there. Yeah. You know, obviously, obviously there, there is the satellites around that, there is the, the, the energy platforms, um, there is the EV as well that, that's actually going on in the carbon. Mm -hmm. But uh, I, I'd rather strategise in a place where we actually know we're really, really good at, you know, and where we, we, we take a big chunk of the marketplace. And getting, getting back to what we talked about the Tears Valley as well, someone might ask us for something and we might not be able to provide it, but we know somebody who can. Mm. So using my job as an example, mm. um, you touched on traditional advertising. Mm. You know, we'll do, we work with a lot of digital agencies mm -hmm. across the Tees Valley. Yeah. You know, we'll scratch their back, they'll scratch ours. Yeah. Um, and it's it's all about sort of giving something back. Mm. So while we're not gonna, you know, say we're, we're experts in everything, like I said, we, we, there will be an expert yeah. on the doorstep or somewhere else in the Tees Valley so yeah. we can bring business in and I think that's a, a good way of helping geographically helping us thrive yeah. as a business community. And also refer business out which is good. Yeah. It's always yeah. nice to help oh, yeah. you know people that have got a business they could be doing windows, they could be selling cars, they could be doing like building houses. It's nice to refer business on. Yeah. You know, especially within Teesside. Yeah. You know, because this is where we're from and this is where we you know where, where, where we need to really make it happen. Yeah. I think that a lot of people kind of sometimes don't realise that let's say they use you guys for their energy. It's not just you guys and your staff that you're giving jobs to and help support in the local mm. area. It's also like you guys use probably like a lot of local supplies that you touched on there. So you you're feeding yeah. those people as well. Yeah. You feed the business yeah. that they're connected to. I'll give you an example. Them. I mean, when, when we moved from the, the innovation centre in Hartlepool, when we outgrew that, we moved to one of the old buildings on the Hartlepool Marina, which used to be occupied by Garland's call centres, and it stood sort of empty and derelict. Mm -hmm. Now, 500 yards over the road from us, you've got the, the navigation point, which was described as Hartlepool was jewel in the crown for a, a pint after work in the sandwich shop at lunchtime. Yeah, it's All of a sudden, we put 200 people into a derelict building, mm -hmm. and the feedback we had from those those pubs and restaurants was ridiculous because they were saying, oh, we've never, never been so busy. Yeah. You know, people it's, people want a coffee at lunchtime or a sandwich. Mm -hmm. After work, they might have to go for a beer after, you know, sat in a, in a beer garden after work and the, the, the crossing the road. I know the response we got was phenomenal, wasn't it? It was, it was, it was really, really positive, you know. And if you can help, you know, the area, you, you really do want to help. You know, it's, it's, it's a bit further down the supply chain, but it's it's sort of... It's directly, it's direct, it's direct, yeah, direct help, yeah. direct, direct help sort yeah. of thing. Yeah, it's um, really there's probably some businesses that like obviously I know the marina like it's a beautiful place mm. uh, we've got clients along along the marina um, and when it's sunny and things like that it's like packed yeah. you know and you imagine it as well but I imagine there's a lot of businesses through the winter and things like that that yeah. might yeah. have struggled if it wasn't mm -hmm. for you guys coming in and yeah. helping them get that you know mm -hmm. infrastructure yeah. in place there uh, one thing that you just mentioned on there that I really wanted to chat here about was you mentioned that you were staying like specialists like in the area yeah. like i imagine that along the way you either had a lot of opportunities i imagine you still get approached by a lot of people we did sell other business services like you mentioned yeah. insurance and yeah. mortgages and things like that obviously in that kind of space like there's a lot of opportunities there there is w was it always something that you decided though like when you were growing that we're not really going to look at this, or I imagine some of the offers that you get are we probably get, quite tempting. Yeah, we, we get we get a lot of offers mm -hmm. on, the, on the table to actually come across, and, and some of them are, are, are quite, you know, a lot of money. However, I, I think it would dilute us down. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't want us to be a diluted, you know, um, commodity yeah. that, that's actually out. I want us to be, uh, and I think at the moment we're getting a quite a, a, you know, being renowned for being the place to go to. You know, for for your energy um, and also your advice on energy as well. 
which is good. You know, so I, I don't really, I want the guys that have dealt with selling houses or doing mortgages or insurance or data or, or firearms or wherever it is, let them deal with that. They're the guys. I'll refer stuff over to you. I've got no problem with that at all. You know, I, I think when you start making it a little bit diverse, you know, you try, it, you, you spread yourself a little bit thinly. Yeah. You know, and, and I think that we've got a winning game going on at the moment and I think if we stick to that we, we, you know, I think you can lose a bit of credibility if you dip, yeah, you dip, dip your toe in so many different ponds you know yeah absolutely um, the club for us is in the, the name of business you know utility lines and mm. um, utility being the, the key word I can't see any reason to, mm. to change that yeah yeah so, um, yeah really really good so one of the things I also wanted to ask you um, is Obviously, with growing uh, so well in the local area and things like that, mm -hmm. you're very well positioned to kind of see all levels of business within the local area. You know, you were a startup a couple of years ago, and now yeah. you're like one of the premier employers in the, you know, in the area. Is there anything that isn't like as an area as Teesside that we can do better? Do you think as a business versus other areas? Mm -hmm. uh, for example, one thing that we've touched on with a few other people is like investment culture and venture capitalists and all that, it's something that's yeah. not very popular within our local area. Yeah. People seem to, uh, like you mentioned before, right, I'm going to start something up and grit it out and have that inside them. Mm -hmm. And then after a couple of years, pop the head up and go, oh, well, what options are available to me? Yeah. But if you go down the road to other areas, it's very common to raise capital or, you know, get investors and things in the company. Is it something that possibly we could do better as an area? Or do you think that there's other areas that we could? Um, I think businesses out there that could help, like we, oh, I, I'm just saying about the mentoring, but you know, it's a bit like the Dragon's Den situation. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it would be nice to have, you know, like some businesses grouped together like a consortium mm -hmm. and put some money together and say, right, okay, let's, let's put up a price, let's put some prizes up there for the best innovation or the best ideas that actually come along. Yeah. You know, we, 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 we're, very, we're very lucky as a company. So, we can. We, we're very good at looking at the future and, and looking at the way things are actually going to shape and, and look. You know, and I think there's other companies that are aligned to a similar, a similar style of, of what we do, of what we do as well. And it would be interesting to do something like that. Yeah. You know, to to give uh, companies an opportunity. You know, um, to sit down with them and actually have a discussion. And also, like with companies that are similar to ourselves, like four or five of us get together. And do something like that. It'd be good for the region as well. Yeah, yeah. it's uh, something I haven't actually discussed it on the podcast, but I've had some private conversations about having something very similar with businesses, especially with yeah. certain business leaders. Mm -hmm. Then, as individuals coming together to yeah. hear opportunities from startups or other, mm -hmm. so their combined experience can help take it to the next level. Whether that is from a mentoring standpoint, from an investment standpoint, yeah. from you know whatever it is, I definitely think that there's mm -hmm. a gap. That I mean, the experience, the experience, and the success stories is ridiculous. And just when I look at where our office is, Hartlepool Marina, next door, so 100 yards up from us, we've got JDR Cables, who are absolute world global leaders in what they do. Next up from them is Seymour Civil Engineering. So in a sort of 300 yard stretch of Hartlepool, there's probably 300 million quid worth of turnover yeah. it, it, within that 300 yards. Yeah. You know, I'm plucking that figure out with thin air, but three absolute like leaders in, in their sectors and what they do. Yeah. And that's just in Hartlepool. When you look across the Tees Valley other areas, there's, there's pockets of real success stories. Mm. And But as I said earlier in, the, in this podcast, we're always a bit shy, we don't shout about it. Yeah. I think we're moving in the right direction. I think Ben Houchin again is sort of pulling everyone together a bit. Mm. Forget about this north south divide and northern powerhouse and things like that because you know you, you narrow that down and then people will say well newcastle gets all the all the money middlesbrough teesside tees valley doesn't get anything forget about about all this divides and divisions and focus on what we do well mm -hmm. and if you could get somebody in, in the same room and it has been tried and to certain degrees of success but if everyone could pool their ideas together i think we, we could create a real force to be reckoned with I think, it's a, it's as well. I think it's a very, very good idea. But you, you, you come up there, you know, it, it, everyone can afford a day out of a month to actually, you know, we can all align ourselves, get together and, and, and see how we develop this. Do we, we spend more time with the schools? Do we spend more time with the colleges? Yeah. Do we spend more time with the youngsters? We had a, a we, we pride ourselves on bringing the schools in to actually show them what actually what they're about. 
you know, show him around for the day. We, we get him some lunch. We talk to him at the end of the day. Um, one of the directors shows up and asks him, well, who would, who would take a job here? Who would come and be one of my apprentices? And it's the phenomenal responses we actually get back off of it. You know, it, it, and I think that's what's missing, you know, with, you know, working closer with the schools and working closer with the colleges. Um, because I think there's a void at the moment in education. Um, I think there's, there's the top half, yeah, and then there's like a middle bit, yeah. and then there's the lowerish bit, yeah. and the and the problem is the lowerish bit and the, the top bit, the the the, mid, the the bottom bit, the middle bit is getting missed. Yes, yeah. there's, there's that section that's missed mm -hmm. completely. Everyone loves education. Everyone wants to go and and fulfil their education needs and, and, and that. But I just think that there's too much about what's happening at the top. Yeah, that the the, the 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 bit there. Which is a quite a substantial bit, yeah. We we not making a fuss over, yeah, and we're not making the best of, yeah, you know, really. And there's um, a lot of there's a lot of good things going on in you know, Teens Business Magazine. Mm -hmm. You know, that's a real you know, I look forward to reading that every quarter because it's a real success story. Not yeah. just as a publication, but the content of that publication. Mm -hmm. You've got the Teens Valley Business Networking Group that brings everyone under one roof. So there is a lot a lot being done to bring people together. But I think we probably, as a business community, need to do more yeah. and, and bring a real sort of fighting spirit yeah. to the area. And you know, steps are being made in the right direction. And I think, you know, 12, 18 months down the line, we could be looking at a, a far brighter picture. Yeah, yeah, I agree. So, is there anything that we haven't touched on that's going on currently with Utility Alliance that you you'd like to share with them, some people who? Might not know if they're not in the this industry. This is my marketing manager. <laughs> I just <laughs> throw you in the bus there, man. There's, <laughs> yeah, thanks. Um, there's, there's always things going on. Every day is different. Every every job I've done in the past, I've had a, like a to-do list. I'm coming on a Monday morning, and I've, you know, I've got X number of jobs to tick off by the end of that day. This job, I think my to-do list went out the window after about 20 minutes of on my first day because it just changes all the time. I'm constantly recruiting. We're constantly doing campaigns to bring in not just new customers but new staff mm. as we, we hinted on earlier um, as the business has grown we're, we're bringing in new support staff there's there's some exciting opportunities on the horizon and um, there's some some new roles coming up so really it's just a case of watch this space in terms of what we're doing and how we're progressing we've, we've had we started off with regional recognition and, and award ceremony and things like that yeah that was we, you know that, that was something we're, we're proud of. We then got national recognition. Um, earlier this year, we were named as the, in the top 100 companies in the Sunday Times Sunday Times list, which was a massive yeah. um, a, a massive accolade for us. So we're not standing still. We're, we're trying to make progress in the right areas. We don't want to go too fast and lose control of it. But you know, there's no sort of uh, there's not like an end goal in sight at the moment. We're, we're just Moving in the right direction, long way yeah. continue. Yeah. I've got two messages before we go. Yeah, right. we've still got okay. one more thing right. to do. So, yeah. Okay. Um, first message is to everyone out there that's uh, starting off in the new business and, and it is hard going. Please, please don't give up. You know, even when it's hard, you know, there will be brighter times. You know, even when you think, you know, when you get to a Friday night and you think, oh, geez, I've got to do my books, I've got to do something. Don't give up because there are people out there that will help you, yeah, and and, and they will help you. You know, uh, everyone wants to see people succeed. You know, so that would be my first message. Don't give up. You know, keep keep going with it. And the second message is, if there's any young people out there that want to give it a go, please contact us. Drop me an email. You know, um, my my email address is darren.sutherland at utility-alliance.com. If you want to send your CV over to me. I'll get it you straight in for an interview. Anyone that wants to give it a go, come over, sit down, have a cup of coffee, talk to my recruitment team. Please come over and have a chat with us. You know, so that's mm -hmm. you know that, that's my two messages. <laughs> yeah, no, it's phenomenal. <laughs> like, yeah. uh, kind of get, we'll make sure that that's kind of out there. So we are whenever he comes on the podcast, we we ask everybody at the end of the podcast the same three questions. Right, because it's really good to kind of get everybody's individual views and say one and a half each. Right. <laughs> well, you're three, four, <laughs> three. Um, right. So you under the bus now, don't you? Okay. Um, so I'll tell you the questions first, and then we'll revisit. So the first question is, what does success look like to you? 
Right. The reason that we ask it is because it's so good for people to see that there's not one answer to that question. A lot right. of people think it's, okay. we've had so many different answers. You know, some people have said when I'm a millionaire, when I've got this in the bank, some people have said, I want to spend more time with my kids when I'm happy. You know, there's no, like, it's mm -hmm. great for people to see. The second one is, have you ever had a setback or a failure? Or right. at the time it was perceived as a failure? Yeah. That's later led on to success. Mm -hmm. Or put you on the path to something that would be great. Yeah. And then the third one is, have you got anything that you are really into or obsessed by at the moment? So, for right. example, Ben Houchin's answer to that was he was really obsessed by like home automation and Alexa and things like that. Right. He was like going daft on trying to like yeah, as yeah. much in his organ as possible. Yeah. We've had gadgets, TV shows, right. anything and everything. Okay. So there's a bit of it. So we'll come to the first one. Uh, what does success look like to you? Success for me basically um, would be, and I'm not just saying this because I'm on this show, it would basically making young people happy and giving them employment. Um, I'd be I'd be wrong to say it's not about the money. It is about the money because if you've got not got the money, you can't you know live your dreams in business or, or what you're doing. But it's to see uh, young people in work, see them happy, um, see a society that's uh, it's a working society. You know that, that, that there's jobs out there for everyone. You know that every shape, every form of, 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 of what a person is. You know, is, and, and that's why I call success. Mm -hmm. You know. Mm -hmm. um, and it's it's a hell of a delivery, yeah. you know. It is a hell of a delivery, you know, to, to actually to, to actually work with. But I think uh, with the business leaders and the government um, and the councillors and and, and, the, and the councils, we we can get to an end with this, you know. And and all it needs is that everyone bringing their heads together yeah. and putting this together. You know, that's what success looks like for me. Yeah. You know? So on the other side of that is in uh, have you ever had a failure of I hate to say the word failure because it's like no, sad so final, you know what I mean? But, you know, or a setback that the time seemed terrible, but actually. In business or? Either. And we've had both. Right, okay. Um, a setback. Um, I think setback would be probably planning. You know, I, I, remember, I remember specifically a, a, a project I was actually working on in the Middle East, um, and because it wasn't planned, very well, things got out of out of you know like concrete and and fabrication works and 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 what it and, and I was young at the time at the time I was only something like around about 32, 33. Sounds old, but in 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 the Middle Eastern years, it's quite young. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. that's still young. <laughs> 30, 32, 33. And, and what I think what it actually told me is that and, and taught me at the time was that you have to plan. You have to plan what you're doing, especially when there's other people that's relying on what you're delivering as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because obviously we at the time we had we had pipes and we had conduits and we had cables going into it, this a lot of concrete, yeah. And it hadn't happened. Mm -hmm. Eighty concrete lorries waiting to pour, you know, steel works in, there's no pipe working, you're reliant on other people. So I think Planning anything, and I, and I think that's that, that's quite a testament for for any for any stage of your life, really. You know, it's, it's planning. It, it, it's just if you make scrambled eggs, you're gonna have to plan to make the scrambled eggs. You get yeah. the meal, you've got to have the eggs. Mm -hmm. You're gonna have the, the seasoning for it or whatever. Mm -hmm. You have to plan. You know, and, and you know, and even if the plan don't work, at least you've got then something to go back and actually go through your plan to see where it didn't work. Yeah. You know, so basically document document your plans basically so you can actually refer back you can go back to the page you can go back to the chapter you can go back to the actual you know the lines on your spreadsheet or whatever you can actually go back and actually analyze and see then you can go and put it right yeah and that's success as well mm -hmm. you know because you've learned out of that and you've actually rectified what you actually wanted to do so, I think, so that's my that's my favorite thing. no no it's yeah. a phenomenal answer <laughs> no it is it really is like obviously i think a lot of people we try to get across that actually in, you said it yourself that your failures are actually the bits that push yeah. you on to the new bits. They like do. at the time yeah. it seems terrible, but as long as like you take something from it and adjust, then yeah. they're the bits that allow you to take those things. Sometimes you've got to go backwards to go forwards. Yeah, yeah. You know, and, and I think everyone signs that they've got a, a forward gear, but there's sometimes no reverse gear. Yeah. And actually, you know, sometimes you've got to maneuver to get around to where you actually need to go to, you know, and, and being flexible. 
as well and being open-minded and being I think you know positive to yourself and understanding that that was wrong you know I could have thought about that because I think we're all very we're all sometimes very uh, very adamant of, of turning around and saying well my fault I think we're all very you yeah. know well my fault it was his fault you know and we're all quick to play spin the bottle and you know see where it ends up you mm -hmm. know but to actually take it on board and say no I'll tell you what that was was my fault mm -hmm. you know and I can tell you where it was my fault mm -hmm. you know that's the that, that, that's the that's the big thing. I think that's a good sign, uh, like a great sign of either a managing director or an or CEO, mm. that you know that to be able to say actually everything that happens within the company is, yeah, uh, you know, exactly. You know, you know, it's no other for the three of us. I mean, it's great and the bad. Like, yeah, exactly. You've got five hundred seventy people work, working for you. You know, every single one of. I used to pride myself on wanting to know something about every single employee. Yeah. You know, now obviously it gets a little bit more difficult. Whether they how many people they had in their family, how many children they had, what, you know, what football team they liked, what meal they, I used to love my, you know, pride myself in that. Now it gets a little bit difficult. But I think as uh, as a three directors, myself, Bob and Phil, we have a full responsibility. We look at that as being our family. You know, that is a very paramount thing. So whatever we do, you know, is that, you know, that's why the door's always open. You know, it doesn't matter if, if, if it's, I mean, I wouldn't say I do it every day, but when my calendar's not full, I've got no diary appointments. If someone wants to come up and have a chat, they're having a hard time or whatever, you know, it's not only the HR department, you know, that's, that's got this, but as directors, I feel a responsibility for every single person that works for me, not only the person that works for me, but for their families as well, you know, because, you know, it's, it's about delivery at the end of the day. And we, as, as, as directors, have to deliver for them, you know, and that's it. So then the third one and final one, is there anything that you are very into or obsessed by? I'm going to answer this one. Oh, yeah, all right, <laughs> even better. Because 12, 12 months ago, yeah. 12 months ago, he was obsessed by guitars. All right, and okay. He couldn't pass a shop without going in and buying a guitar. Yeah. And it got to the point where he was getting them delivered to the office so his missus <laughs> yeah. wouldn't find out. Oh, yeah. I know you're sticking oh, it really, really yeah. big time. This is, but yeah. now from what I can gather, I'm really I mean, not going to see this. <laughs> his office at one point was like Abbey Road, wasn't it? Yeah, it with some desks in it and all sorts. Yeah. It was ridiculous. But that sort of fad wore off and he's, he went and bought a Harley Davidson. All right. So he so now he's bought a tent yeah, yeah. and on a weekend he goes and sits with Hells and Angels drinking pints of petrol. Actually, in the middle I went of that bit car. That was <laughs> Angel's <laughs> bit. You know, and that's why the beers do sport. a lot for great, like a lot of it, like the like the Hells Angels, the actual organization, the large yeah. charities, large charity work. Um, yeah, they're like a the biker society for like as such. Yeah, um, yeah. We, 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 I'm, I'm in a society, and I'm in a, I want to make it clear, I'm in a society, um, and we do a lot, we do a lot for Alzheimer's, we do a lot for Parkinson's, you know, and the, it's estimate to them guys. You know what I mean? It's, it's oh, yeah. they do on bike runs, you know, for a long way, you know, and they've got the buckets out and they're collecting and everything. And there's, there's like, you know, it's like, it, it is, yeah, it's good. It is. Yeah. Uh, so I wonder where he goes next. I know. 12 months from now, uh, the next day. Uh, we'll I know that they do a lot of great work. My father in law, God rest his soul, was, uh, like, he was a very big bike for me. The Santa run every year, the yeah, yeah. year and all that kind of stuff. So he yeah. was like, really, so like, yeah, I've yeah. seen the good that it does. So it's, it's a good thing. Good. Uh, thank you very much for coming on and chatting with us. You're uh, welcome. welcome. Yeah, it's yeah. been really enjoyable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I was a bit so. stressed out before I come. <laughs> <laughs> we try and make it not that bad. We try and not, you know, make it too evil and horrible for people. But no, yeah, yeah. I really appreciate good. it. Thank, thank you, so you much. very much. much. Yeah. Cheers, man. Okay. Thank, thank you. you. Uh, this has been episode 40 of the Teesside Business Podcast. The Teesside Business Podcast is promoted and produced by Person to Person Market. Thanks very much for listening.